Hello everybody, welcome back to the MOOC, Improving Historical Reading and Writing. I'm Scott Petrie, and today I'm going to talk to you about meal paragraphs. So meal paragraphs is something I picked up in one of uh, Susan De La Paz and Chauncey Montesano's uh, articles about historical writing. They had a few tips on argumentative writing. And uh, I also have a link to a, a transcript on the blog that you can check on in the bottom of the module. Uh, but first, I want to explain what a meal paragraph is. It's important to know that meal paragraphs are body paragraphs in an argumentative essay. And what they do is they help you uh, help students learn a specific format for uh, consistently evaluating their evidence. So there's, the M stands for the main idea. This is your thesis or your topic sentence. The E stands for evidence. This is the proof that the student either found in the primary source or the book or in their independent research. And then the an A is analysis. This is their explanation, their rationale. How does the evidence prove their main idea? And then finally a link where they link the paragraph back to the thesis. Now, many of my students only think that a sentence is five sentences. It cannot be any more than five sentences. It should not be less than five sentences. This is certainly not so. You can have meal paragraphs that are seven, eight, ten, fifteen sentences long. It is okay. This is where you show off that every single paragraph in your essay links back to your thesis and all of the evidence you've selected actually does, you, you explain it. Not only do you quote it, but you actually explain it. And one of the mistakes I see quite often in, in my students' work is they'll use a quote, but then they make no attempt to explain it or tell you why it's even in their paper. They just slap the quote in there and think they're done. So uh, meal paragraphs, um, what I do to practice them is I start off and I give them some information. This is a, a graph or a, a table from the uh, document-based project, the DBQ project uh, group. This is from one of their uh, DBQs in world history, uh, what to remember in Soviet textbooks. It's about the Cold War. And so I give the students this table and I simply ask them to read the table and then make an argument as to which would be a better country to live in, the Soviet Union or the United States. And they have to use the meal paragraph for their format, they have to use the meal paragraph structure, and they have about 10 or 15 minutes to read this and explain their rationale. So let's take a look at a couple samples. Bear in mind, these are ninth graders, this is early in the year, they're not very good at this yet. Okay, so here, uh, this student makes the mistake of just saying, meal paragraph, U.S. is a better place to live. I'm not sure if that's a sentence or his title. I'm thinking it was the title, um, and let, let's read through this whole thing. Uh, meal paragraph, U the U.S. is a better place to live. According to document B, hey, a citation, there are a lot more radio in the US than the Soviet Union. And radios were really useful during World War II. Another reason why it's better to live in the US is there were many, there were more TV sets in the US than in the Soviet Union. And just like the radios, TV sets were useful to civilians, for civilians. So they knew what was going on during the war. Lastly, the last reason from the Redundantly Redundant Committee. Uh, lastly, the last reason why it's better to live in the U.S. is the education. Uh, the education was better in 1915 and in 1980 than the Soviet Union. So what we have here is a lot of incomplete sentences, uh, three evidence sentences with explanations just kind of tacked on, and the analysis, the explanations themselves are not sufficient and then lastly, the big red flag is there's no link back to the thesis. Well, because there really is a thesis. It's the U.S. is a better place to live, but we don't really know why in the beginning, and we don't know why at the end. So 
Like I, uh, I, I would model this in front of the class. I just pull this up on my document camera and I talk them through this just like I'm doing with you. So the good thing is we have technology, we can rebuild this. So all this person needs to do is front load their thesis in the, the, in the M, the main part. So the United States would be a better country to live in because the US had more radios, televisions, and a better education system, period. One, two, three. This is the roadmap. This tells you where this paragraph is going. Next, we're going to talk about radios. Then we're going to talk about televisions. Then we're going to talk about the education system. So according to document B, there's a nice citation there. There are a lot more radios in the U.S. Now, this person had the chart, so it would be nice if they put the actual number in there. I might make a comment about that. There are a lot more radios in the U.S. than there are in the Soviet Union, and radios were really useful during World War II. Here I would like more of an explanation. How were they useful? They were used to report enemy troops, submarine sightings. Give me a little bit that shows you understand how the radio technology works and how it helps people. Uh, another reason why it would be better to live in the United States is that there were more television sets in the United States than in the Soviet Union, and just like the radios, TV sets were useful for civilians, so they knew what was going on during the war. See, that sentence has a little bit more of an explanation, but in high school, I'm expecting more. So why is this uh, good information? Why is this evidence? Why is it important that people have television sets? Uh, lastly, the U.S. education system was better in 1915 and in 1980 than the Soviet Union. Again, give me some more facts, give me some statistics from the table. Therefore, with more education and an informed public having access to more radios and televisions, the United States would be the better country to live in. Okay, so we've got the main idea, we've got the evidence, we need more analysis, we need more explanations, but now we also have a workable link back to the thesis. More education, informed public, more radios, more televisions, the U.S. is a better country. So, with a little bit more effort, this paragraph has been salvaged. Let's move on to our next victim. This person correctly labeled the activity. Do now. You have 10 or 15 minutes to do this. Yay! According to document B, Russia would be a better society for the following three reasons. More medical doctors, longer lifespans, and uh, I think increased literacy rates. I feel that the United States is a safe place to live and they care about us, and they care about us. Like the gross national product, the United States has $2.47 trillion, and da, da, da. this person just goes off the rails here. So at this person I, at point, I realize we had a good thesis and then we've fallen totally apart. So uh, we need to totally rebuild this sentence or maybe even restructure this whole paragraph. And we need to make sure that this person is going to follow the roadmap they give themselves because uh, right off the bat, instead of talking about medical doctors or increased literacy rates or a longer lifespan, they're talking about uh, gross national product, they're talking about per capita income, and then they get to literacy rates. So, warning, 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 danger, Will Robinson, well, let's move on. According to document B, Russia would be a better society for the following three reasons, more medical doctors, increased literacy rates, and a longer lifespan. I feel that the United States is a safe place to live in and they care about us. Who cares? No one cares what you think. This is a history class. You're supposed to be showing us the evidence and analyzing the evidence. Uh, like the gross national product, the United States, stop. I've stopped reading because you don't talk about gross national product in the following three reasons. Now, when I look at the document again, I can see that I have the three things to look at, the, per, uh, the life expectancy, the literacy rate, and the number of physicians. So that's okay. You've given me three reasons. I'm not really sure if they're good reasons. Let's take a look at the paragraph again. So this person starts off with a great thesis, or at least a solid thesis, 
which I think they may have copied from the person next to them. Because when they try to collect evidence and explain why their thesis is important, they totally fall apart. They are going to have to throw out the rest of their paragraph and start from scratch. So let's see if we can do that for them. According to document B, Russia would be a better society for the following three reasons. More medical doctors, increased literacy rates, and a longer lifespan. With 346 physicians per 100,000 people in Russia, compared to the U.S. average of 176 physicians per 100,000 people, it stands to reason that Russians would be healthier than the citizens in the U.S. The Russians made great efforts to increase the literacy rates in their country, and they went from 25 to 99 percent between 1915 and 1980. The U.S. had a 93% literacy rate in 1915 and a 99% rate in 1980. The life expectancy, blah, blah, blah. The big problem here is this person just randomly picked facts, and what happens is the third fact uh, contradicts the life expectancy in the U.S. is much better than it is in Russia, but here he's arguing that Russia is a better society. Well, Russia does not have a longer lifespan. Russia has a shorter lifespan than the United States citizens. So we're going to have to totally throw this one out and start over. Sorry, do not pass go. Do not collect $200. And what I'll say is the good thing about doing this as a warm-up is you really catch the kids who are having trouble making inferences having trouble with their logical thought process, and they're just not following the spe specific format. And you can stop them here at the paragraph level before they waste an entire page or two pages of basically just writing around the question, writing about nothing, not pulling evidence out of the text and explaining it properly. So, uh, conclusion, uh, this student needed more analysis. Um, no, needed to explain the chart more before actually writing the meal paragraph. This person did not have enough understanding of the information and couldn't support what they were saying. So, um, this leads me to our discussion. What types of short writing assignments can you create so that your students have a chance to practice writing meal paragraphs? I look forward to hearing your answers on the discussion board. Thank you very much for tuning in.